Welcome to Mrs. True Crime. Today's video is an in-depth look into unsolved Jane Doe cases. It's a tale of loose threads and conspiracy. If you are triggered by anything dealing with death, feel free to click off this video. Perhaps check out my gaming channel, Retail Me Games, for some lighthearted content. If not, I'm Nicole. Let's get started. The action of ejectment is an obsolete law practice between a landlord and tenant in England. To bypass the drown out proceedings between landlord and squatter, the owner would put together a suit between two fictitious people in order to reclaim his land. The plaintiff was John Doe, and the defendant was Richard Rowe. It's believed the first names were used because they were most common. The names traveled to America, where they are commonly used as placeholders for unidentified missing and or deceased persons the female placeholder being Jane Doe. According to National Institute of Justice editor Nancy Reeder, there is more than 40,000 sets of unidentified human remains in evidence rooms of medical examiner offices throughout the country. Only about 15% have been entered into the FBI's National Crime Information Center, NCIC. One file on that percentage includes the Tuscaloosa County Jane Doe. On April 18, 1982, three fishermen found a woman partially submerged behind a large log in a tiny slough of the Black Warrior River in Romulus, Alabama. She is white, 34 to 38 years old, approximately 5'4", and 110 to 115 pounds. She had dark shoulder-length hair and brown eyes. There's a scar over her right eye, below her eyebrow, and a partial dental plate of two front teeth. She was discovered wearing a long sleeved blue shirt, blue knit pants with elastic waistband, white bra and matching panties, and a size 7 gray tennis shoe. The autopsy revealed that she'd been sexually assaulted and beaten, but her official cause of death was strangulation. During the autopsy, the medical examiner also concluded that there was evidence of a prior pregnancy. After her body was discovered, witnesses began to come forward. One witness reported seeing a woman matching her description with a man near a cemetery on Robertson Cemetery Road. Apparently, their car had gotten stuck. The man appeared angry, cursing and blaming the woman for the state of the car. During his shouts, he referenced being at a bar earlier in the day. He was described as white, 35 to 40 years old, with a muscular build and a reddish complexion. He was clean-shaven stood 6'1", and was approximately 180 to 200 pounds. The car was a green 73 or 74 Ford LTD with a dark vinyl top and possible front end damage. The investigation to the car and man turned up nothing. Investigators would later theorize that based on her clothing, she may have been fishing. The Tuscaloosa County Jane Doe was buried December 9, 1982 in Sunset Memorial Park. The county paid for the funeral. The card on her casket read, Because we believe that no one's passing should go unnoticed and unmourned. In 2013, her body was exhumed in hopes of running her through DNA testing shone a new light onto the case. Unfortunately, as of 2018, she still remains unidentified. If anyone has information about her, or if she looks familiar, you are urged to call the Tuscaloosa County Metro Homicide Unit at 205-752-0616. Held down by a red 22-pound weight around her neck, the late Pontchartrain Jane Doe was discovered June 19, 1986 by a fisherman in Slidell, Louisiana. It's believed her body was dumped in the lake between Bayou Lacombe and the Rigolets Pass. She's a white female between 20 to 30 years old, approximately 5'2 to 5'4, with light brown or red shoulder-length hair, unknown eye color, freckles, and a petite frame, weighing around 120 pounds. She was naked when she was found, with a plastic bag placed over her face, held with gray duct tape. There are numerous stab wounds on her face, a 2.3 centimeter scar midline on her abdomen, 
1.5 centimeter circular scar on her right knee, and a 1.2 centimeter scar on her right wrist. However, her cause of death was ruled as asphyxia. She was buried in an unmarked grave in Potter's Field with a plain white cross some time later. Almost two decades later, the late Pontchartrain Jane Doe case would almost come to a close, but it only led to more questions than answers. In July 2003, St. Tammany County Police Offices received an alert from SCIC about Lisa Sexton, a missing girl from Ohio, and they believe their Jane Doe may finally have a name. Lisa was 14 years old when she voluntarily left Lorain County, Ohio on May 1, 1981 with her boyfriend, who was a drug dealer. He returned some time later without her. Her mother stated she last heard from her daughter in 1984, and her last known whereabouts was Tampa, Florida. The police officers exhumed their Jane Doe and compared her DNA against the DNA of Lisa's mother in hopes to put a face with a name, but the two didn't match. Lisa Sexton is currently still missing. She's described as white with red hair and blue eyes, with a scar on her left cheek. She is 5'8 and roughly 125 pounds. At the time of her disappearance, her teeth were in near perfect condition. Anyone with information about Lisa is urged to call police at 440-322-2241. If Lisa is alive today, she is 51. Though Jane Doe was still unidentified, the exhuming of her body led to new discoveries. Firstly, her face was nearly decomposed, except for her nose. Her nose was in great condition, leading investigators to believe she may have had a nose job. She had perfect teeth, no wisdom teeth, cavities, or fillings, which is believed to mean she is of middle class. She was three months pregnant at the time of her death and had the markings of a ring on her left hand, but there wasn't any jewelry found with her body. She also had a previous fractured right hip, which may be related to a sports injury or a car accident. Her breasts were also silicone implants, and the attempts to ID based on the serial number was unsuccessful. Detectives also found a partial fingerprint on the tape her face was wrapped in. They believe it belongs to the killer. Anyone with information, or if she looks or sounds familiar, is urged to call 985-645-2467. So far, both the killer and Jane Doe remain a mystery. In Fort Collins, Larimer County, Colorado, on June 27, 2011, a black woman exits a taxi for the umpteenth time, handing the driver cash and entering yet another motel, her walking cane keeping her steady. Who knows how many motels this makes? Had she lost count by now? This motel in particular is called Motel 9 at 3634 East Mulberry Street. The office attendant asked the usual questions, her name, how she was going to pay, and how long she would stay. The woman stated her name was Sandra Nelson of 5203 Bosa Avenue, Park City, Utah, and she would pay, as always, in cash, and would stay through July 11th. The attendant handed her the keys, and Sandra disappeared to her room. For the duration of her stay, Sandra became hard to miss. She never missed the morning breakfast. She talked about her past, stating she was originally from LA and was looking for a house in the area. Allegedly, she also talked about donuts she'd had in Arizona. It's unclear what else she spoke about or how often, but when she didn't show up for breakfast the morning of July 11, 2011, the staff took notice. Of course, they figured since it was her last day, she checked out. But that night around 10, when they entered her room, there she was, lying on the bed with pills at her feet and bright blue granular purging from her nose and mouth. There wasn't a suicide note. Sandra Nelson was dead. Except, she wasn't Sandra Nelson, and she wasn't from 5203 Bosa Avenue, Park City, Utah. The name and the address was a fake. The woman on the bed was a 5'6", 55 to 70 year old black woman. She weighed approximately 211 pounds. She had black, graying with more white in front around her face type hair. It was styled into soft waves, but tight afro curls when wet. The woman had brown eyes, a healed five inch lower midline abdominal scar, a faint six inch abdominal scar, 
possibly from a past C-section, and a one-inch round scar at the bottom of her chin. Her fingernails and toenails were long, clean, and intact. She had natural teeth, but a partial upper denture. When she was discovered, she wore a brown, black, white paisley pullover top, black undershirt, black bra and pants, white cotton panties, white socks, and black shoes. She wore white metal earrings, chain necklace, and wristwatch. In the room were two suitcases with miscellaneous clothing and toiletries. There was also black plastic framed RX eyeglasses, a walking cane, and unmarked baggies of pills and medication, a black purse with a wallet without any personal information, a Bible, and the book, The Political Teachings of Jesus. Her luggage disclosed nothing about her. The labels and other identifiers had been meticulously taken prior to her death. The autopsy revealed a massive overdose of multiple medications, and the case was ruled a suicide. It was concluded she died 12 hours prior to being found. Though Reddit users and other sleuth forums have speculated the identity of the woman, who was later found to use different names and aliases throughout her stay in Colorado, there is yet to be a concrete ID of the Fort Collins Jane Doe. Anyone with information, or if she looks or sounds familiar, is urged to call Larimer County Police at 970-679-4517. In 2005, the Identifying the Missing Summit, which included federal, state, and local law and medical examiners, sought to discover ways to better solve and investigate missing and unidentified persons' cases. The result was the National Missing Persons Task Force. To further assist in solving these cases, the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, Name Us, was created. Name Us brings together an unidentified persons database and a missing persons database. Beyond this, there's also the Doe Network, the Charlie Project, and Project EDAN. Though there are many resources to locate missing and unidentified persons, there are still many unaccounted for. Who are these women? What's their stories? And how much time will pass before their cases are finally solved? I'm Mrs. True Crime, and remember to be kind, be loud, be aware. For more information about any of the cases listed, why not check out some of these awesome links? And if you like what you saw and heard today, why not drop a like and a comment? Maybe subscribe while you're here? <laughs> I make new videos every Tuesday and Friday, and you don't want to miss what's in store. <laughs>